Jagata Goy, thank you for joining us and answering some questions. Um, in your mind, what would be the three biggest takeaways that you expect the participants to remember from your session today? Okay, so, um, so in my session I'm going to be talking about um, risk criteria. Um, and um, risk criteria used in risk, uh, risk evaluation. Um, and I don't think an awful lot of attention is paid to risk evaluation. You know, there's a lot of, lot of focus on assessment and techniques and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so I guess from takeaways, I'd like people to think a bit more about how they evaluate risk in their own organizations. Um, then I'm, I'm going to talk about a particular technique that you can use, um, uh, which I hope will resonate with, with some people. Um, and um, because I, I, I always think when you, when you come to a conference, you want to take, you want to listen and hear and be inspired and ideally you have something you can take back home and use. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so I hope for some people, I mean, there's, there's quite a range of, of people attending. Many people will, will um, you know, you don't want to teach your grandmother to suck eggs. Um, but, uh, but I hope for some people it'll be a really useful, mm -hmm. useful kind of piece. Um, and then um, the, the, the debate in, in risk assessment, risk evaluation that I've had with many risk, risk management colleagues is, is whether a uh, qualitative assessment process, an evaluation process, has any value, mm -hmm. um, and, um, or whether it should all be about the dollar sign. Um, so I guess that's the other thing I want, I'd like to have people to think about in terms of, of um, when they evaluate risk, are they looking at it in the whole? Yeah. And, and given that the, sort of the definition of risk in the ISO 31000 is the effect of uncertainty on objectives, uh, what, what should risks be evaluated against? Your objectives. The impact it has on objectives, or how would you how would you phrase it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, you know, if you're using a consequence framework, that those consequences really are about your objectives. Now, one of the things that can be interesting in some organisations is that um, you know sometimes those objectives are stated really well, and you can just pick them up and run with them, mm -hmm. and that's easy. Um, some organisations, you know, they have great mission statements and vision. But, but it's not really very practical, and how, how do you turn that into something real? Yeah. Um, and some people, some organizations have strategies which are, you know, exciting and future-facing, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, um, but from a risk point of view, don't have everything on the table that you need. Um, so that, that's, that's, that, I think, is a challenge for risk managers is to say, well, these might be our written objectives, but are there other implicit objectives that we can surface and talk about? Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so again, I think, think the, the approach that I um, advocate that helps with that. Now, now, this next one is a super provocative question. Okay. Um, should companies strive towards having a sort of a single set of criteria for um, evaluating different types of risks? Or should companies have different criteria for different types of risks that are all eventually linked to objectives, but different objectives are different sort of... Different so, I, I think... I, I'm. I'm quite a grey operating area person, I suppose. I like sort of practicalities. Um, so I've mostly worked in um, fairly medium-sized organisations. You know, um, maybe a couple of thousand employees, uh, a few locations. Um, and, uh, and there I would advocate for one um, high-level, um, corporately-owned enterprise-wide criteria mm -hmm. um, for, for all of the um, more substantive risks. Um, obviously, you know, at, at a task level, um, you know, for example, if, you, if you're assessing the, the health and safety, I work in a university, so the health and safety risks associated with a field trip, mm -hmm. um, you're not going to be, if, if you use the overall one, you, nothing will score. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to have a way of, of having uh, specific criteria for specific things, but you need to make sure that they're aligned and feed up to the main ones mm -hmm. so that you don't have a clash because otherwise you can have a situation where, you know, risk assessments are going on all over the place, red lights are flashing all over the place, yeah, yeah. and none of them mean anything at all. So making sure that there's something that works, um, and in 31,000 terms, you know, that it's a tailored and aligned and works and fits with it, how, the, how the culture works. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. um, Thank you so, for yeah. that. Thank you. And to end on the lighter mind, what advice would you give to young risk managers or people just getting sort of thinking of getting into the career of risk management? They may not be young, they may be from a different field, like five yeah. and a lot of them, they're just thinking of moving into the risk space. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting one because risk is still very diverse um, and, uh, and people can take very different paths. 
Um, so I would say, uh, you know, risk management is 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 an interesting and fun world to be in, because at an organisational level, you you get to hear about all sorts of things. Um, it's quite depressing sometimes, but or is it always fun? Um, because you hear all the all, all the things, good and bad. Yeah, I mean, if if so, I originally came from quality, which I guess was more positive. But again, one of the things that's nice about 31,000 is it says that, you know, your, your risk system doesn't have to be about bad stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be about the uncertainty of, of good stuff too. Yeah, fact, um, so you should be involved. Be. Yeah, you should be involved with with all the new initiatives. Mm -hmm. So you should see a lot of stuff that's exciting and good. That's yeah. true. Um, of course, you may also facilitate things that, that didn't go so well. And, and my background is in you know, healthcare. And, and, you know, sometimes when we're doing root cause analysis, is, you know, people were very upset. Something bad had happened and um, so you know trying to make those sorts of processes kind of cathartic rather than, than uh, blaming is obviously a challenge um, but yeah every time you see positive change that's that's pretty cool to be part of it so um, and risk management has a potential to really make a huge impact on how people think about uncertainty on how organizations operate in terms of how business processes work yeah, and I mean, fundamentally, it's, it's one of those runs around um, how do you get organizations to, to, to listen to each other? You know? mm -hmm. so, so it should be very empowering. Um, I think the problem is, is, is when it doesn't work, it is absolutely the opposite. So you can feel like you're the Cassandra, you know, the, the lone voice in the wilderness. Um, and I think, you know, certainly if, if you look at some of the, the kind of corporate uh, failures, you, you can usually find that person. Um, and, um, you know, so I suppose it's one of those ones where what advice would I give? I'd say when you look at organizations to join, you know, be really careful that, that they are really wanting to manage risk mm. and not wanting to tick the box that says they manage risk. That, that's very so. good advice. Thank you for that. Thank you very much for taking the time. You're very welcome. Thanks. Thank you.